So friends, this is David Briggs. This is somebody that you will know, but you don't know that you know him. David played with Elvis, played on a lot of records, played in concert, not just Elvis records. David is famous for playing on tons of hits, more than 10,000 records, they estimate. There's him with the fellas. This is David on the road with Elvis. You see Elvis there in the background. And if you saw my Bobby Ogden videos, Bobby took David's place. David actually recommended Bobby. So we're going to talk to David Briggs a little bit. I kind of caught him off guard, got a little bit of info from him. We'll try to get with him again. So friends, welcome to the house of David. So this is a trap door right here. Yeah, the rest here is the whole trap door. And there's a garage under there. There's a garage under there and so, stairs. So what is the store? And security. Well, I just built it, you know, uh, as much for him as for anybody to be able to come in and talk to him about it on the road. When I was 76, was the year I played with him full time, kind of. Of course, that was just 10 to 10 days, two weeks a month, because I couldn't quit session. He tried to get me to play with him for years. You know, uh, but you've I been playing on records since the six sixty six, mm -hmm. and I never did go. I did go out and do a few things. I mean, when I was in L.A. playing with him, uh, he talked me into going to Vegas, and staying with him. He said, "Just go one night. If you don't like it, leave." And I went and stayed six weeks, and I had to cancel thousands of dollars worth of more than more than I made actually, although he was paying pretty good money. Mm -hmm. But uh, he just kept on, kept on, wanting me to go. And I'd go guest with him. I went out to, I did the world's largest New Year's Eve party in 1975 in Pontiac, Michigan. Sat in with them. Glenn D was there too, of course, then. And then I did uh, a couple of shows with him when he was doing the movie. That's the way it is, because I arranged a couple of songs on that album. Stuff like that. And so you added, now prior to you playing with, with him and Glenn D, there was no, it was just piano. So you actually yeah. added the the key, the clapping organ, and, like and all that clapping up. Yeah, he wanted me to play acoustic piano the most time. I didn't want to. I said I don't want to. He said, "Well, you play it on records," but I, I just it's just a lot of work, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just not as much fun in playing the clapping and electric piano. You play like a lead guitar. Play when you want to, and don't play when you're not. Mm -hmm. yeah, don't play when you don't want to. Just kind of easy. He said, "All right, just play whatever you want." <laughs> So that's the only reason he added it, so I'd go. That's amazing. So With all his prior records, to that, I played all those. I played the acoustic piano and the electric and the clavinet. It's all me. Right. I've seen a few things written up that are wrong. One of them said, "What what my records?" My ex-husband in law. I a lot. lot of, I know it's tons of them. Three hundred size. I don't know. Two hundred <laughs> size. Three. I don't know. Nice. But I know you, we talked about earlier, you played on Trouble, you played on... Oh yeah, those were the later things. I played on, God, you know, hundreds, hundreds of sides. You know. So uh, we... Uh, you had to go to all music. Uh, so you played in in Graceland in the sessions that they did in the Jungle Room. Everyone there ever did. And that you play. played on Danny Boy. Yeah, well, which was in... Yeah. So, and you were slightly inebriated. Yeah. Because y'all had gotten done. We're finished. And Glenn D was playing the piano, and Elvis yeah. didn't know you were still there. Yeah. Well, he didn't know where I was. I don't, he's happy to see me. Come here. Uh, he's one of play. But he told Glenn D to get up and let you sit down, and you played it. Yeah, well, that's that's probably because they were Glenn D was threatening to leave. I think. Yeah. But you played on Danny Boy. Yeah, well, actually, I, yeah, I played it. Inebriated. I played something <laughs> on everything we cut. Didn't I? Yeah. That's incredible. So you built this trap door so Elvis could come here, pull in the garage, well, come up. Well, I also built it for myself too, but it's the whole thing I tell them about. It. It's the garage door. You could just drive in and come up here and would get, because even at RCA Victor, it always leaked out word that he was coming, you know, and people would just swarm. Mm -hmm. This would be a private place, a way that he could get up in here. Yeah. yeah. And we talked about it. He never did actually get to record it until he died. Then I got I had the RCA account for three years. I had the Elvis account and the Jim Reeves account. 
and I did the medleys and all those kind of things. I produced them all here. So he did get to work here. He so a lot of the music that that we hear today and the newer records were all produced some here. Of, some of them were down here, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That is well, awesome. Well, like the Elvis medley I did here, you know, using part of the things that are already cut, but redone most of the music. Mm -hmm. So using his vocal and replaying oh, yeah. the tracks. Yeah. On the ones that you could do this, some of the mono things that I used that were already, you know, we had to use what was there, like like uh, Don't Be Cruel, Teddy Bear, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I overdubbed to it, made it better. Because mm -hmm. those you couldn't pull the vocals out of is what you mean, no. you couldn't lift it. You could EQ and get it up a little bit. Today yeah. you could probably pull the vocals out of it. Yeah, yeah, visually. You couldn't then, this was 82 or so I did these. Man, you've done a lot of amazing stuff, David. Yeah, a bunch of stuff. And uh, so I know your brother opened this cabinet and showed me a lot of tapes. Like um, uh, I remember seeing Roy Orbison in there uh -huh. and stuff. So you work with Roy. Oh yeah. Who all? <sighs> it's you just a me list. A question of about ten thousand artists. <laughs> really? That's what the whole. Thing How many sides say. do you think you played on? Uh, again, they say over ten thousand. Over ten thousand. Yeah. Records. That is incredible. Yeah been doing it since I was about 13, 12, 13, 14, but didn't start really super professionally until I was about 18. But you made a good living doing this. Oh yeah. Yeah. Once I moved here. Yeah. And down in Muscle Shoals, cut a lot, of, it was all fame and no fortune. Cut a lot of hits, didn't get paid what we deserved and had to work extra hours, but it was good training to come up here. Yeah, you were ready when you got here. Well, it wasn't quite as ready as I thought it was, because when I saw how good they all were, I had to get on. I did a lot of studying on my own. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true now. Um, when you come here, the best of the best come oh, here. It's, yeah, the competition, especially the instrument I play, you have Floyd, Kramer, and Pig, two of the best in the world. Yeah. But I managed to slide right up in there with them. Yeah. became friends with both of them. When Floyd Kramer died, he was using me as his leader, and he was producing, and I'd use Pig with me. So all three of us working together. That's amazing. Yeah, that was like a dream for me. So what was it like? Let's go back to the Jungle Room. I know you said that, that they moved a lot of players around, but basically you and Ronnie played on every track. We're the only two of, of all of them that played on everything. It's different ones like Tony Brown played acoustic piano on some things. I played acoustic piano on some of them and electric piano and clavinet on all of them except one and I hired Bobby, uh, the guy from Memphis who's dead and played organ, Bobby uh, Emmons. Bobby Emmons. Playing, he's another great player to play on that and when I he was played playing, with Chip's moment over yeah, at American Sound. When I was playing acoustic uh, piano I got him come in and play the electric. Well, you know, with Felton's permission, Felton, you know, they had worked with him before. Yeah. So you worked with Felton a lot. Oh, yeah. And uh, now I heard a story about Felton, and I ask everybody that has ever known Felton this story, and so far the answer has been one, one direction. There's a story that Felton carried a snake around in a bag, a pet snake. Do you know anything well, about no, that? Well, no, he had that snake in his office when he first started work for RCA. He was head of ABC Records here. Okay. And he got offered the job because he was a big Elvis fan. In fact, he was an Elvis imitator. He used to do Elvis impressions. And uh, he, he was the biggest fan of Elvis that there could be. He even, tried, he even had a, uh, somebody he produced that sounded like Elvis, early 60s. He probably did. Yeah. After we've done a lot of There's stuff. some records he produced. But anyway, he, uh, he had a, a cougar, I think. He had a couple of cats. Well, you know, wild cats and the snakes in his office. He was down there with Chet. I know Chet was afraid to go in there. He wouldn't go in really? Felton's office because it's snakes and cats. A big cat would jump on you. But they were friendly, you know. It'd scare you until when you first did it and then you got used to it. Felton always loved animals, wild animals, you know. Wow. So the the story's true. You see, everybody I've asked so far goes not. Well, I never about. saw him carry a snake around, but he may have carried it somewhere. But they were so big, they were big like pythons. But you know for a fact he you had couldn't. one in his oh, office. Oh yeah, kept one in there all the time. Big wow. ones. They were big pythons. You couldn't get them in a sack. Wow. So I don't know about that. I never heard that story. But I mean, just him having a snake is an incredible story. 
She, he loved exotic pets. And I can't remember what kind of cats they were, bobcats or panthers or something, you know, they were exotic animals. Amazing. Um, so yeah. you played on the road. Now, uh, most of my watchers saw Bobby Ogden. This is David Briggs that played before Bobby Ogden. In fact, you're the one that recommended Bobby for that job yeah. when you yeah. quit. Yeah. And um, prior to that, though, you played on the road, and you were generally with Tony Brown most of the time when you were playing. Well, and Shane. I and then Shane. And you one. got Shane his job. Uh, Glenn D was playing when I first started playing that year. So the year was split up with Glenn D and Tony, and then Shane playing the one. Hmm. Because Glenn D was already going out and doing stuff with Emmy Lou and different, I don't know who else he was working with. Emmy Lou mainly, I think. What other memories do you have? Any anything in particular? I know you said that they uh, that one time y'all were you finally set up in the racquetball court. And what was the sound like in the racquetball court? I can't imagine it sounded good in there because it had to bounce well, like it crazy. Did, it didn't matter. It was just big enough to put the instruments in to rehearse. If we had to, like I said, we only did it. I only did it one time though. But Elvis did show up, but didn't play long. That's when Shane and Larry London were playing. You were trying to work them in the band. Well, just they had they were hired for that tour. Right. And had to, you know, they had to rehearse and learn some of the songs. They didn't get to hear many. With Elvis, he only did a couple and he left because yeah. he said, sounds great. <laughs> and he left and they almost had a heart attack. Because <laughs> they thought they were really going to practice. Then whoever was left there, I don't remember who all left, probably, probably James and I mostly. Because the other guys were in L.A. and places like that. They wouldn't have been hanging out there for that. We tried to show them what songs we thought he might do, but that's impossible. You yeah, know, you could show him a thousand songs, and you might not. Because you said he them. did not go by a list, period. Well, he always had a list, but he didn't stick to it. That didn't mean anything. Some some nights he might. I mean, I played even just in that one year, and a few of the other times I played Vegas. I mean, I played God, I don't know how many shows, a lot, you know. Because uh, we in Vegas, we used to do two shows a night for six weeks. That's a long time. That is a lot. So, and they would do request shows there, where they would put that he, all he that would, champagne thing out there, and people would drop songs in it. Well, he well, but he just people would yell at him from the audience. He'd hear him, and he'd try to do it. You know? And it may not even be his song. Yeah, it didn't matter what it was, really. I mean, he could sing anything. I mean, he invited people up on the stage, the Elvis imitators. He'd say, "Come on, let's see what you sound like." He'd come in here, sit down on the stage. And, Watch him, he'd look over at whoever he was close to me all the time because the piano was there. And he'd look around and say, is that what I sound like? i said, say, yeah. Would he really? <laughs> he had one guy who was really good. He was about as good as Elvis. Do you remember like, who that was? No, I don't know. We had dozens of them out there and Elvis was just really? swinging the mic. But I guess when he said, is that what I sound like? I said, yeah. That's <laughs> I was close as one too. That's what Cause it, see, I, that just seems I odd started to say me. only better because we cut him up and put him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kidding with him. He didn't care. <laughs> that is interesting. So, you got any other stories you can think of? And I know I've kind of put uh, you on the I spot today, somebody. and I don't mean to do that. You know, I can come yeah. back anytime. But yeah, I'd have to just think about it. There's so many. Yeah, I know you Most got a lot of stories. Most of I can't tell. Yeah, and I understand that. Can we uh, can we maybe tell some stories again another day? Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, let's time. do that. Yeah. But man, this was incredible. The main thing here today, friends, is is this was put in theoretically for Elvis to come record here. Although he never physically came to this building, he yeah. did record in here, yeah. or or uh, the the masters were redone at some yeah. point in here, and you produced oh, them. Yeah, that's right. Also, Jim Reeves stuff. Jim Reeves. Jim Reeves medley, same thing. That's how I got the Elvis thing. We had a hit medley with Jim Reeves and RCA said, they first asked Owen Bradley to do it because we had done, and I was leader and arranger on for Owen Bradley, Patsy Klein, and Jim Reeves, and we put them together and got them in the same key, you know, which was hard to do, but you could do it back then with a couple of little outboard pieces of gear. And uh, they had a hit singing together, duet it. And uh, so they came back to us and said, they told Owens, we love what you did, because you do this with Jim Reeves. He said, I don't want to do it. He said, get David Briggs. He did most of it anyway. 
because I I was the leader and helped him put it together and yeah. put strings on over it and all this kind of stuff. So he's the reason I got the Jim Reeves thing, and then I did it, and it was a hit. And then RCA said, well, could you do that with Elvis? I said, of course, I could probably do it better than anybody who was still alive, you know, because I knew all the songs. I'd been a fan of his, whatever, worked with him. So that's how that happened. That's pretty cool. I did the Elvis account for about three years, and I hired Tony Brown to co-produce another album with me called I Was The One, because they had the Stray Cats came out, and they had a thing on the cover of Time Magazine and said, they're the ones that started Rockabilly. I said, no, they're not. It's Carl Perkins and Elvis Presley. So I said, I got an idea. We'll call, I went to Joe Glenn and called the album I Was The One. Picture of Elvis on it would do Rockabilly tunes to show what he was doing 30 years before you ever heard of the Stray Cats. Exactly. Uh, yeah, Stray Cats came out because of Elvis. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people did. Yeah. So we called that album I Was The One. I got Tony to help me with it. Arts. He was working at RCA then.